Uh, when we gave the explanation about the economic crisis happening in the 1968-67, we have given the, the data to show that physical investments from the government size decreased. And then there will be no ability to make new room for these young people in city to have a job. So we have a large number of the jobless youth sent to the countryside. <clears throat> that means the crisis very much harm the city, the, the citizens. And uh, a lot of families just uh, separated. And the family parted and then dif to different uh, pr uh, provinces, into different village. So I just uh, mentioned I just gave you the case as myself. My family, six members sent to the sixth place. And uh, so that time, uh, a lot of family stand on such kind of big economic crisis cost. Means that the people pay large number of the human force for solving the problem of zero capital investments to maintain the industrialization. Also, people need to stand for the crisis, for solving the crisis. Uh, the, the crisis make the, the, the uh, out of job, make the unemployment. And then people need also tolerate such kind of bad, uh, 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 bad events. And then when people followed the policy, to go into the countryside, and then the crisis in city soft landed. So I mean, when we talk about the third crisis in China, it's a similar as the second crisis. The crisis soft landing by people, not by whatever we familiar with is a modern concept. Also, the soft landing by rural by agricultural society, not by city, not by any so-called modern measures, not by the so-called clever policy, and so and so. So this is, this, that is a mouse time. The second time solved the, the, the problem of the crisis. But we also need to know most of these crises somehow as a kind of the problems that from the economic problem transforming into the political issue and then to be the political problems. In any country, no matter you claim what isms, capitalism or socialism, when you're facing the challenge of the economic crisis, these are economic problems always transform into the political uh, uh, problems. And uh, if you do your research in different country, you can find there is a similar phenomena. That means that's one is a kind of rule, it's a kind of regulation. So I said that it's a general rule, economic crisis transforming into the political crisis. Here, you can see that it's 1967. In Shanghai, it's a mega city. This is a cultural revolution joined by the working class, by the citizens, and also the people's army here. And uh, they set up a new form of the government management. That is a Shanghai People's Commune. And uh, there's a Shanghai People's Commune. That is a big ceremony for setting up Shanghai People's Commune means that they are trying to totally change the bureaucratic government structure. That is a political reform. Caused by the economic crisis, almost all of this uh, traditional management originally come duplicated from Soviet Union and then set up in the China, in China as a kind of political superstructure, could hardly facing the challenge of the economic crisis. 
by the government animators? No way. So this time, when you are facing the challenge of economic crisis, you found that the governments have no, almost no function to deal with the crisis. So the Cultural Revolution, a lot of people cannot understand the Cultural Revolution first. The theoretically thinking, that is uh, under the proletarian government, governance, the revolution need to keep going. That is from Leninism. But how to implement in China? At that time, China announced, at least, announced that it's a socialist China. Socialism, and then you indicate you have a class struggle. Where is the capitalist class? So landlord class has been done. And then you are a socialist system. These cadres is a capitalist class. And these bureaucrats, they are capitalist class. And people suspicious a lot. But if you take what I gave you as an explanation just now, you may understand. When China re-emphasized the class struggle, the whole world is uneven. The social chaos everywhere. And then the imperialist country used, directly used the military force to price developing countries' struggle, the left-wing struggle. And so there are so many uh, uh, bad things happen in the world. So at that time, China re-emphasized the class struggle and then drawing the worldwide revolution. That is a very common, uh, very popular phenomena. That you can, as if you were in that time, in 1960s, you can be easier to understand China emphasized the class struggle. And, and otherwise, China used this slogan, this uh, so-called political propaganda, to mobilize the low class to mobilize the whole people as a labor to concentrate invest into the constructions. That is why China maintained its industrialization. That is the 1960s. And also I mentioned that Chinese political leader has reformed the army. The army is the critical department, critical sector of the whole of political superstructure. So it means that army has been changed reformed. And then also they changed the rural people's commune. They changed the factories. It means that the whole of the economic infrastructure also changed. Now they are trying to change the, the critical part, that is the government, and also the cultural part and the educational part. It's educational system, cultural system, and the government system. These are three systems still remain in so-called traditional or threat union styles, not re-embedded to the Chinese style societies, so Chinese style socialism. So that is a contradiction. So that is also why there is a so-called furthermore revolution in the name of cultural revolution. Because this time, it's initiated in the cultural sectors and educational sectors. So the cultural system, education system, and I suppose that this cultural revolution finally will be totally change the government system. So the government's the ruling system, yes? So when they finish almost all of the infrastructure constructions, uh, infrastructure reform economically, means that change the whole of the base now they are going to upgrade to change the management system. That is uh, at that time. So uh, from 1960s, and in 1966, when they start the cultural revolution, certainly there is a very serious contradiction. Mm -hmm. Also because of that time, um, when the universities and the governments uh, have a big trouble of the cultural revolution and uh, the management, the ability of the management downgrade. 
is not applied to the crisis because the crisis just uh, one year after means that 1966, the Cultural Revolution Initiative started. And 1967, the physical deficit became more serious. So you have, a, you have to deal with these uh, two problems. One is a uh, cultural revolution, means the government's management decreased. The ability of the government management de decreased. Another side you need to deal with the crisis economically. So that is a contradiction. So since it's, that's what means that the, 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 the leader, especially Chairman Mao, the Mao himself, they need to very urgent to find a way to do the management. So that is why he uh, approved the Shanghai People's Commune. That is also San Jie He, means uh, working class and uh, cadres and uh, intellectuals. These uh, three parts mix together as a, good, as a group, as a leading group. These are uh, this, uh, three parts mixed as a group to be the leadership. It's a successful model in, agro in, in not only in agriculture, but also in, the, in, the, in, in factories, in the industries. So this time they are trying to rebuild up the regulation, rebuild up the rule. So it means that by such kind of mixed, three part mixed the group. That's because you know, I, I, I gave the, the several important key point here. That is, uh, uh, in 1963, the government, I mean, bureaucratic system, raised up the third five-year plan, want to uh, gain the full modernization. It's a similar model of Soviet Union. I just uh, give you a second. Think about this, uh, the third five-year plan. They made in 1963. But 1963, if you want to build up the modernization, you need to have a more capital. Means regain the relation with the Soviet Union. Until now, there still be a lot of arguments. Should China be linking with the Soviet Union in 19, late 1950s? If you not, you can keep half, you can have a capital keep invest into China. And then you have a no big disaster. And then you set up a line with the Soviet Union. And then the whole of the world will still be in two part. And the social, socialist ally still be there. And so many uh, arguments, so many imagination, they imagine that if you keep such kind of relation, what will happen? But there will be no hypothesis in the historical studies. The practice means that you have then delinking. But it also means that a lot of cadres, they educated from US, uh, 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 Soviet Union. Similar as nowadays, you have so many high level cadres educated from the United States. At least from Soviet Union trained cadres come back to be the ministers or even the, 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 the vice premiers, whatever. They learned the model, and they will use this model. They learned the regulation, they will use this regulation to, main, to manage the Chinese economy. So even in the beginning of 1960s, you have a very clear to know you have no capital. But the five-year plan still be there. Want to keep going of 1950s uh, threat Soviet Union styles construction. That is a, a kind of con contradiction between three front construction uh, uh, investments and the third five-year plan construction. The third five-year plan, very clear to give you a picture, we are trying to realize full modernization. 
any modernization need large capital investments, but you have no capital. So it means that exactly, no matter whatever you believe, you cannot implement the third five-year plan. And then when 19, 19, 1964, the Central Party Committee changed from the third year five-year third five-year plan into the third front construction. Means large, even you have just a little investments, you need to invest into the the preparation of the world war, of the imperialist country attack you. So that is uh, that time, the contradiction. And uh, this uh, contradiction turned to the 1966, that's Cultural Revolution. I stop second, give you room for think, for thinking about this one. And uh, I don't want to give you a detailed explanation, but anyway, I just uh, roughly to talk. The Cultural Revolution stopped or postponed or oh, anyway, it's, it's exactly stopped by economic crisis. Because here, when the 1966 China announced no any foreign debts, means that China has a payback all the capital investments from the Soviet Union. But payback debts and the three front construction all make the budget burden became more and more heavy, the deficit more and more serious. So I just mentioned, gave you the, 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 the pictures to show that the investment's ability downgrade to minus 30% means that no any ability. And so that is a, why they have a mobilization to make the jobless urban youth go into countryside. But that one, this one, is a very important factor. Who is the, the, the main force of cultural revolution? Young people. When young people mobilized to go into countryside, you have no people drawing the cultural revolution. So since 1968 to 1969, one more than 70 million, 17 million educated youth, I mean the school people, school young people, sent to the countryside. There's almost no people drawing the cultural revolution. Because cultural revolution started from the educational system, cultural system, and then you send these people to the countryside. Nobody can be the main force to keep the cultural revolution going on. So that is, I need to mention that. Here is the, in Tianjin, uh, these are peop young people in the uh, uh, trains, and their family and the classmates come to say goodbye. So that is Tianjin, means that many thousands of people going to the countryside. And here is uh, in northeast China, they live very uh, difficult. There's, there's these uh, shelters, these are, and, uh, but they work very hard. And anyway, in northeast China, they dressed as a, as a uniform, means that they can have a little bit of salary. That is a so-called state farm or military farm. And sub-military uh, organizations means they still have a little uh, salary. But most of people, if they go to the countryside in the brigade, in the village, they will have a, no any salary. They need, they only can have the labor credit. So I was that time in the, in the village I only have a labor credit. So the end of the year, according to how many labor credit I created, I can have a food and a little bit cash. So that is a different uh, uh, treatment. So that time, the urban youth would like to go to the state farm. And so state farm maintained a lot of uh, uh, 
educated youth. So that is uh, in, the, in the countryside. That means that by such kind of measures, the cultural revolution stopped in the year 1968 to 69 because the, the young people has been sent to the countryside or state farm. So not, there is no 10 years cultural revolution. And according to the, the, the documents, and a lot of people believe that there is a 10 years disaster caused by the cultural revolution. But indeed, cultural revolution ended by economic crisis. That is not mentally you think or, or, or subjectively you believe or documentally you, you write. You, you wrote there, um, that is a period. You need to at least understand what is the regulation, what is the economic rule. So when we give such kind of explanation, we need to go back to finally the conclusion. It's uh, here. We said linking and delinking. Linking what? You said linking the imperialist country or capitalist country. But no matter you set up what kind of linking, the key issue is that you put the capital in the center. You develop a model. It's a capital-centered model. And the government's policy is that the pro-capital policy. So pro capital means that the government became corporation, became the company. So the central governments, when they pro the capital, they play a role as a de-politicized. Side, de -politicized. It's uh, not easy to understand how that the country, the state, depoliticized. It's very clear. If the government set up the policy for pro-capital, it means the government is capital. The government is company. The government's not government means the government depoliticized. So the state became a big state capitalism. That is the resources. That is sources of the state capitalism. Because the whole government set up the capital as a center. Because most of these are newly developed, newly independent country. The first challenge is that short, extremely shortage of the capital. If you want to set up modernization, you want to learn from your colonial master country, you must have the capital. And the capital you don't have, you need to take the capital from outside. So that is a capital investments from outside. And then you control by outside. That is a capital-centered development, developmentalism. Developmentalism means that you need to put capital into center, and the governments became a capital. Uh, 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 pro-capital governments, and then the capital make the price of the labor. So it means labor resources capitalized by central capital. So what is a centralization? What is a decentralization? When people believe that liberalism is decentralization, when the capital is central, means that you need to decentralize the capital position. Can you do it? No way. So when the labor became a kind of commercialized labor, the labor price marketized by capital means the capital capitalized the labor, pro labor resources and then to take the interest maintained by capital. 
And then capital also can capitalize the natural resources. So the labor resources capitalized, and then the cost transferred to the society. And when the natural resources capitalized by the capital, an environment cost gave to the natural, to the earth. So that is why there is so many environment, environmental cost, so many social costs nobody take. It's because capital has been capitalized, the natural resources and the labor resources. So that is, when we talk about the Chinese experiences, we, mean, we need to know that before 1960s, when you really linking with the foreign capital, you must set up the capital-centered system that the state followed foreign capital. You set up the state upper structure, the political upper structure, or a foreign style. Which foreign capital make which foreign institution? That is a so-called institution. So in institution is a derivative from the capital style. Uh -huh. So that is a, that's the model. And caused by this model, because your labor capitalized by the capital, labor only have a low salary for their survive, means that labor have no surplus. No surplus means that you have no savings. No savings means that you have no financial system for investments. That is Latin American countries and African countries. The labor only have a little salary for family survival. For family survive means that you have no, no surplus. No surplus means no savings. No savings means no investments. No saving and no investment means that you have no banking system. Remember this once a time I have a dialogue with a Latin American scholar. He talked a lot about how to set up their bank. I said, where is your savings? In Africa also, do you have savings? If you have no savings, how can you set up the bank? Bank means that take savings, do investments, and then take the interest. That is bank. It's traditional bank, not modern bank. If you modernize your bank, you need to have a lot of speculations. That is another thing. But even the traditional bank, you don't have the ability to set up. And then talk a lot about the financial system, how to set up independence. It's a textbook. It's not reality. So the reality you should change first. To change all of these colonized areas, single economy system. If your economic resources controlled by transnational company, you cannot set up any financial system, even the budget system. So the first, change this one. That is a key issue, that is core. And then, that is local governments also became the corporatism. And then the industrial capital taken the resources for the center capital. And then the technical and the tr trainings and the education all became a part of the capital for capitalize the labor resources. So you have a no comprehensive education. The education, the function is a means trying to make the social resources in the, into social capital, trying to make the labor resources into labor capital. So the labor is originally a human being, have a multi characters. But the education used a standardized textbook, only cut down all of your natural characters, make you to be a standardized labor force. That is a so-called education and training system. It's not for human being, it's for capital center. And then they are in name of market, but market always make large amount of the negative externalities. That is this model. And then this model have a big externalities out of this model. This model can have a large revenues to financialization. And then financialization, financialization can make liquidity. And then this 
simulation and uh, exclusions. That is uh, from the capital center upgrade to the financialization. But they put all the cost to another circle, that is labor to be a social cost. And then the ecological cost and the resources cost and even the industrial cost when you upgrade. So when we give this uh, two, two cycle together, we want to make people to understand if you set up the linking system, if you rely on the foreign capital, there will be no way out. So when we talk about 1960s in China, the big change is that to put labor into the center. What is a new political e economics? The new theory of when you want to make a kind of creative of traditional Marxism, the key theory is political economics. What is that? Our creative by the analysis of the 1960s, the third crisis in China, we found that in 1960s, China changed the center. Originally capital is here, but from 60s, labor is here. And then if you put labor as center for the reform, you can make labor shareholders. That is a further reform. But by 1960s, they don't have that, but they have a labor centered. And then labor centered, they can make the whole country, the central, the state, politicized. That is a re-emphasize the class struggle during the worldwide revolution. So the state became very high politicized. And then you make the institution to have an institutional reform, to change for labor-centered, from capital-centered to labor-centered. That is big institutional reform. And then you can make the whole of the governance socialization. You can socialize the governance to make the three part as a group. Then to governance the factory, to governance the, 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 the social area, to governance the rural society, whatever, all a three part mixed group by laborers and technicians and managers. So it's a, it's, a, it's a successful experiences even in the Second World War in Yan'an. That is a, it's a, that time is a, a, a revolutionary area. They still use three part mixed together as a group to do the governance in local, in the village. So it's a, it's a, it's a historically speaking, it's a successful model for the government, governance socialization. And then you use, you, sorry, you use this one, technician and education. Popularity means that you have a mass education. You have a mass technical trainings by people. Because you have a too many local experience, local techniques applied to local growth. But you forget. Now, when the labor centered, you can change the whole of the education system and the training system. And then to make the all the resources internalization. So you can have a resources and environments, institutional cost to be internalized. Originally it's a cost transfer to the environment, to the natural resources. But if you have a people, the labor centered, you can change such kind of transformation. You have a positive externalities. And then you have a socialized and ec ec ecologicalized civilization. And uh, by such kind of labor centered, you also can have a local uh, uh, service socialization. That's uh, very easy to understand because in 1960s and 70s, even the early 80s, 
you don't need to worry about your kids. When they come back from the school or from the kindergarten, nobody kidnap them. And uh, because that your neighbor will care about your kids. And uh, you don't also don't need to worry about your old generation. The whole society will care about the, the, the young and the, and the old. And you just uh, go to work. And that, at that time, we have uh, three decades. The, the, all of the, the, the public goods socialized. All of public service socialized. Mm. So that is the lowest cost. You don't need to set up a bureaucrats and then to many different sectors and then pay very high, high cost and then to set up many so-called law and regulation to limit it, the people's service. No, at that time, people's service. So I remember that when we talk about the, 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 the system, the institution, and then the governance and then the, the service, we are very uh, uh, easy to understand. But for, the, for these uh, overseas uh, 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 peoples, they are not easy to understand. In the very, very beginning of the 1980s, when China just opened to West society, and the American Center delegation come to China, they are organized by these social, uh, uh, social uh, issue studies. I mean, it's a sociologist. Yeah, they come to China, they st and, the, and the law school professors and the economists, and then they organize a social science uh, delegation come to China. They said, you, are, you have no law. I said, law is to have too much high cost. Said, no law, how can you manage your country? I said, OK, by people's uh, self, uh, how to say that is uh, uh, self-consciousness. Mm, and then and we talk uh, in a building. So outside the, the window, there is a Chang'anjie, it's a long street in front of the Tiananmen Square. Many uh, uh, bicycles, thousands of bicycles, wow, that, that, in that time, in the beginning of the 1980s. They said, if these uh, bicycles cra cr crashed, and how can you deal with the problem? We said, OK, they just say, do si pi xiu, and then go back. Means that they repeat one word from Maoism, and uh, means that you need to, uh, uh, how to say that, uh, to reduce your selfish and uh, criticize the revisionism. And then you go back to your own family. Nothing happened. We don't need to go to court. And then the, the American uh, social scientist asked, if some people heard, we said, OK, we have a social care. Every unit, they could just go back and then go to the um, uh, medical uh, 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 service. And then, OK. Means that if you socialize your public service, you don't need to have uh, so many high cost institutions. So that is why this Western society cannot understand in 1970s, 1960s in China what happened. You have so many people that say, OK, maybe that is not good for the human rights, for democracy system, whatever. Because they do have a kind of ideology. And they use such kind of standard to, to, to give you the comments. And then whatever you have is just a bad, just negative. So when we talk about labor-centered, we can understand all of the system. So that is why we, uh, we need to give uh, more explanation about the 1960s. Because about 1960s historical studies in overseas societies, it's almost nothing. They just use their traditional Cold War ideology to describe 1960s, what happened in China. So nowadays, we need to go forward to have a more uh, 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 materials to collect for deepen our study. OK, I will finish my uh, uh, brief of 1960s, the third economic crisis in China. Uh, thank you.